Hello and welcome everyone to this month's free fundraising masterclass with uh, guest Jennifer Singh from She's Newsworthy. As you know, I'm Cindy Wagman from The Good Partnership and we host these masterclasses to help small nonprofits do more with less. And it is my absolute pleasure to focus today on media relations. I don't know about you guys, but anywhere I've always worked, it's a consistent, uh, I guess, thing on our wish list to have more media coverage and of course the right kind of coverage. So when I met Jen, uh, who's a former uh, TV personality, journalist, uh, who specializes in media and PR for sort of small, uh, small businesses, I thought you are the perfect person to talk to our community. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, also hearing what she said really aligned with my experiences and I wanted to share that with everyone. Uh, so that is Jen, do you wanna add anything? No, I'm just really excited to be here. Uh, I have worked with some nonprofits, so I definitely will provide lots of examples. Uh, feel free to ask as many questions as you want. I'll give my experience. I've worked in the industry um, for approximately 20 years in TV, radio, and as well as print. TV and radio are my specialties, so that's usually where most of my clients end up. Awesome. Um, so. I'm going to ask questions, but please feel free to type uh, questions into the chat and I will read them out as we get them uh, at an appropriate time. But let's start with what makes a good media pitch? Because some of the things that organizations are sort of good slash bad at doing are, you know, when they get a really big donation or when they have an announcement and they send out a press release to mm -hmm. Newswire or something like that, and then they just wait for responses. That doesn't work generally. No. So, what yeah. does work? So, uh, when there's announcements or big donations, like you mentioned, usually the best thing to do is to try to craft a pitch um, to the media that's going to show the end result. So I'm going to actually step back a little bit. Cause I think that a lot of people don't realize when you're sending out pitches, um, you really have to do your research before you actually hit send. So that really involves taking the time to read the papers that you're pitching to watch the news that you're pitching to, as well as listening to radio. So it's not enough to just write a pitch and then find some email addresses and send them out. You really have to customize each individual pitch to each individual station or radio or newspaper that you're pitching to. So uh, it, it's just a really a matter of paying attention. A lot of people want media exposure and why not? It's pretty much free PR, but you have to do a lot of the background work. I have a lot of clients who say that they want to be on TV, but they don't have cable. So, uh, which is co common now because a lot of people are just, you know, they use Netflix instead, or they watch a lot of videos on their phone. So I always recommend people hopping online and taking a look at the local news stations that are in their area. A lot of them, 90% of them post their newscast uh, online. So if you're looking to get uh, to be like the go-to person on the nonprofits or foundation work, anything like that, um, you really want to customize your pitch to the reporter and the station that will be a fit. So for example, if uh, the audience is going to be, um, I'm going to use an example from, from, from Toronto, CBC, uh, Metro Morning, the number one show in the city. And their audience is actually very wide range and very diverse. They are passionate about all sorts of things, uh, education, healthcare, politics. Uh, there are fun segments there too, but, you know, really taking it, taking the time to listen and to figure out the types of stories they pitch to. Uh, you know, if you are pitching a story about money, Money or an app or technology. I know there was somebody here that's doing an, um, uh, that's launching an app or developing an app. Maybe that's something you pitch to one of the tech shows or one of the tech reporters. That's kind of how you have to think about when you're framing your pitch and when you're 
crafting your pitch, you really want to customize it right off the top and tell the reporter or the producer that you're reaching out to why you're sending it to them and why it's going to be a fit for their viewers. The media is trying to appeal to their audiences because their audiences is what pays their bills at the end of the day through advertising. So tapping into who the media's audience is, is, is the best way to figure out how to craft that pitch and customize it. That's so great. And I want to give an example to really punctuate that because I worked with an organization um, and my role is not media and I wasn't involved with this, but I witnessed this, which is, you know, they'd send out these, they'd have even a press conference and like, sure, they get a little bit of, um, coverage and it was all like basically like repeating the same messages but when they mm -hmm. actually approached a specific jour journalist mm -hmm. um, from the paper that they really wanted to be in and they worked with that journalist over well over a month and collectively crafted that story and they got like front page of the section they wanted to be in front of uh, sorry dog is running around um they got the story they wanted. They, it was like a full page story uh, that they had never had before. Um, so it really is the difference between like a little blurb versus like mm -hmm. what you want people to really know and understand about your organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think I think really investing the time. Um, I, you know, I, I've been a reporter for years, and I can't tell you the amount of pitches that get sent to me that are very random and not customized. So when you start developing those relationships with the with the media, I think that's key to getting their attention because they receive dozens and dozens of pitches every week, right? So you're going to want to stand out, and the only way you're going to stand out is show that you have a genuine interest and you've done your research and you've done your homework. Amazing. So let's say we now know what medium we want to approach and we found a reporter we think would be interested in the work we're doing. Mm -hmm. How do we tell the story in a way that's compelling or how do we create that pitch? Like what, how do we understand what about our organization they would want to cover? So I think that when it comes to nonprofits, it's actually easier to pitch, believe it or not, because a lot of the stories can be, can be pitched at any time of the year, just because a lot of them are based on human interest. So human interest is one element that can make a story newsworthy, right? So it makes it important and newsworthy, meaning that it's appealing to a wide audience. So I'll give you an example of somebody that I was chatting with. Uh, you know her, Jana, from The Period Purse. So The Period Purse is a nonprofit and they collect menstrual products to disseminate to women that live on the streets as well as in shelters. And Jana's um, idea for her nonprofit just happened organically and on Metro Morning, which is again CBC's um, number one show in the city, uh, 2018 I believe. And in 2018 she was approaching the one year anniversary and she reached out to the producer and said, hey, I want to be back on. Um, you know, we're coming up to our one year. We've sent out, I don't know, X number of menstrual products to these many women. And the producer said, eh, you know, that's great, but where's the story? Like, there's no story. Like, so many organizations have, have sent out and, and hit their targets, but how is this going to appeal to our viewers? And the key there, really, I said to Jan, I go, well, what about somebody who's been on the receiving end? Like, how have you impacted somebody's life? If I'm a listener, or if I'm a viewer, I want to hear their story. I want to hear that it's so hard for them to get menstrual products um, that, you know, they may be are scraping by and the other methods they're using, right? Really starting to visualize the impact, right? Because that's the impact Jana's organization is really making. So as soon as Jana offered up trying to organize and find somebody who's on the receiving end of her good work, that's when the producers did jump on board and that's how she ended up back on uh, CBC. So um, yeah, I've, you know, I think that's pretty much the, like people have to really start shifting the way they think about their pitches and it's not all about them, but thinking about the end result and how to profile that. Yeah. That's, that's what, that, that's what you, what, what you want to pitch to the reporter or producer. Which is basically the same thing we do in fundraising, right everyone? Like that is, we know stories are the key to opening up people's hearts and we use that or should be using that across our communications uh, as a way mm -hmm. to talk about uh, giving. 
same thing with, with media, um, which is great because we should already have some of those stories and have people who are willing to speak on our behalf, mm -hmm. uh, which is really great. Um, so understanding that, let's say, okay, we have a, we have a compelling story. Mm -hmm. um, we know tar like why it would work for a specific media's audience, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what it comes down to, as you said. Yep. How do we actually make that connection or reach out in a way, as you said, like there's tons of stuff, tons of noise in this area. How do we get noticed? Well, again, it's a, you know taking a special interest and trying to follow the specific reporter or producer that you want to contact. So uh, believe it or not, Twitter is a phenomenal resource. So a lot of journalists actually leave their Twitter, um, their email addresses, their direct addresses in their Twitter profiles. So it's not enough. Again, just a reminder, don't uh, just start sending random emails out just because you see an email address, but make sure that person is a perfect fit. So Twitter is a really good good resource. If you're watching local news now, a lot of the reporters also put their Twitter handle or their email addresses. Uh, some of the stories, we have CTV Toronto Local. They, uh, at the end of their show, I believe they still ask if you have an interesting story, you could send it along our way. So Twitter is a great resource. Um, the other great option, I think, for, I'm trying to think if there's anything else besides social media that's really great. LinkedIn as well. Um, I think LinkedIn is really useful because you, it, the way LinkedIn is built, it's through your connections, right? So there's always somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, right? Who could do a possible introduction. Uh, perhaps, um, I've had clients in the past where they want to pitch to, let's say, um, there was a, there's a local uh, show in Toronto, CP24 Breakfast. So they have a weekday show and then they have a weekend show. And she wanted to pitch to the weekend show, but didn't know any of the producers, didn't know any of the hosts personally. And I said to her, but you're personally friends with the host during the week. So, you know, it's as simple as sending an email to that host and saying, hey, I know that you do week weekdays, but I think this would be a perfect pitch, a story to cover on the weekend. Can you send it to the right producer? And then she was on. Like, it's just literally a matter of working your connections, being, um, you know, being thoughtful when you re reach out and try to make these connections, but uh, it, it doesn't hurt to ask, hey, I know this is not your specialty. I know you work at X organization or X media outlet. Can you just forward the pitch off to who you think is going to be the right person? Amazing. And then what goes in a pitch? Right. Are you giving the whole story? Are you giving a snippet? Um, what background information? One of the things that drives me a little crazy is like in our in our sector everyone's always like throwing their mission and vision on things mm -hmm. and it takes up a lot of space and I mm -hmm. generally think people don't read it but like what what needs to be in there to grab someone's attention and give them the right information that they can make an informed decision to say mm -hmm. yes this is a good fit or not yeah, so I'll walk you through it. So you first want to start with a really catchy subject headline. So the subject headline could say something like story idea or segment idea, and then in a very tight, crisp headline, uh, explain what that story is. Usually I like to do the headline last. If you remember from high school, you have your hamburger paragraph, you know, your intro, your, your, your meat, and then the ending. And then after you've actually put your story together, that's when you can come up with a really catchy headline. Um, and you want to start off the pitch with introducing yourself immediately and telling the reporter why you're re reaching out to them. So that includes, um, you know, telling them, you know, why your story is going to be a fit. One line about your organization. You do not need to go on for days about um, your accomplishments, um, your educational background. I've had people put in things that have nothing to do with the actual story. Again, reporters have short attention spans and they're getting dozens of emails. Uh, and then you just want to go straight into the story. What is the story? What's the essence? Why should they cover the story? Linking it to something like, um, you know, for Jana from the period purse, her story was linked to International Women's Day. So it was in March and obviously CBC and every outlet across the country was going to be covering International Women's Day. So if you can link your pitch, the body of the story, to something that's newsworthy, that's something that's timely, something that's happening every day, you're already on the right track. Um, and then you want to 
uh, you know, close the email by letting uh, the person that you're reaching out to know, you know, are you trying to invite their cameras uh, to come shoot? Maybe there's like um, an event or are you offering to come into studio and do a live interview? They need to know what, you know, there's a story there, there but what is it that you're offering them? And then definitely leave all your contact information. I've received pitches where people did not leave enough contact information or they left an email address that was a hotmail account that nobody ever checks i don't even know who has hotmail my husband has hotmail now still don't let him hear this <laughs> um but like nobody uses you know leave leave like at least two two phone numbers and an email address um in that email and the pitch needs to be really concise no more than 300 words if you can't fit what you need to say in 300 words, then you need to start cutting stuff out because, you know, you, again, you really have a very short amount of time to get the attention of the reporter. All that other good stuff, your, uh, or, or what your organization is about, uh, any collaborations you've had, any other media exposure, um, you know, profile stories that you've done, interesting blogs, those can go into a media kit. So that can be a two page kit that you attach to your pitch. Awesome. That's pretty much all you need. All right. Does that, is that landing with people? Does that make sense? Um, feel free to pipe in with questions, yeah. but it sounds uh, not that different than, than what we do outside of media relations in our sector. But for some reason, you know, it always feels like this. Um, and not just for our sector, I think generally, and, and certainly how I've seen other people interact with you, uh, is that like everyone's sort of intimidated by this. And I actually want to talk about that because I think one of the reasons is that, oh my goodness, let's say you actually do get a, a hit, you then have to perform, right? You have to <laughs> yeah. be on media, like be on TV or on the radio yeah. uh, or coordinate interviews and then you have clients and you have to make sure that they're prepared. Yeah. Because especially with organizations that work that are working with clients who might not have um Media training. Media training, like, and that's it. You know, we work with clients who are working with um, people living on the streets. So it's not even media training, like, mm -hmm. they're or dealing with addiction and mental yeah. health. Like, mm -hmm. there's certain, um, it, it, it's just less predictable. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how, what, what happens when we, when someone says, you know what, that's really interesting. I'd like to talk to you. Or mm -hmm. how, what, do they, what do they even say when that happens? Well, I want to actually uh, backtrack for one second because you did mention, so for example, you know, it is sometimes harder if you are working with people that are hard to get a hold of. Maybe they do live on the streets. Maybe they do live in shelters. I think that's one of the things that you have to prep before you are sending out your pitch is to really think of a couple different options. So I always like to uh, craft the pitches so that you say, if uh, like for Janice pitch, for example, if she was pitching again, she could say at the end, you know, I'm available to come in for an interview and I can also arrange for someone who is living in a shelter receiving these products to also come in. But before you offer that up, you know, for her, it did take a long while for her to get somebody because people in those vulnerable situations don't want to, don't want to just, you know, hop on the radio or hop on TV and have their faces shown. That is true for um, a lot of instances. So there are some situations for CBC, uh, they do actually protect your, um, identity. So that is something that if you are trying to arrange for that human interest aspect of your story and you're having a really hard time um, getting somebody who's willing to go on camera, you can ask the journalist, the reporter, the producer, you know, is there a way that we can protect this person's identity? They are impacted, but because of job situations or family or some other financial situation, they are not comfortable putting their face out, out there or their voice there. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, if you do get a call back from a reporter or producer, I always suggest asking questions before jumping on board and saying, yes, I definitely want to do this interview. It's really good to figure out if it's going to be a good fit. There's certain organizations, certain media outlets, um, especially in the States, that you know you probably want to be uh, your, your, your brand and your business and your nonprofit to be 
front and center of. And there's others that, you know, maybe it sounds like a great opportunity, but you could be put in a situation where you're asked difficult questions that are not appropriate or, you know, so you, I think asking a series of questions to whoever calls you back just to find out a little bit more. Is this going to be, um, you know, am I going to be on a panel discussing um, like what, what exactly am, is, this, is this story going to be about? Um, you know, am I going to be on a panel with other people doing this discussion? How long is it going to be? Uh, many media outlets now uh, have TV, radio and print. So sometimes you come in for, um, I've had somebody, you know, call me up and say, oh my God. So like I'm prepping for this radio interview and last minute they tell me they're, 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 they're sending cameras as well. So getting a feel for the landscape of what you're getting into so that you can prepare. Um, that's first. Uh, second, I would say if you're trying to prepare for a media interview, try to get some key messages together. So think about exactly what is it that you want to say. Uh, you know, you're not there to promote, promote, promote. The media is usually wanting to talk to you for your expertise or to hear the story. So when they introduce you, they're going to mention your organization, like the Good Partnership. So you don't have to go through the entire interview saying, at the Good Partnership, you know, we raise this much money. You know, I've had that happen and it's like, we, well, you, you don't need to repeat it. So just pulling together some tight key messages so that you know that you are sticking to the story and that it's going to be um, on track and you're not going to get off topic and start talking about other things. I mean, we all want to come across as polished, but how do you balance polished with, yeah. uh, with personality? So I think uh, that's something that everybody obviously has to always work on because it's not, it doesn't come easy. I always say the best thing to do is if you are going to be um, interviewed as well, ask the journalist, they won't tell you, but ask them what type of questions you're going to ask me. And at least you'll have some no notes. And then what I always recommend is just turning on your phone. Everybody has a phone or the camera on your computer and recording yourself and see how you sound. I mean, it's really difficult to watch yourself back, which that's true for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're on TV or not. So I think just practice and doing it a couple times um, alone, because I feel like if you're in front of other people, then you get more nervous. And because I, I do this all the time. I try doing this even before I do my workshops. I do a little practice in front of the mirror or in front of um, or on my phone and then I do a playback. So that's kind of some of the ways, the strategies that you can start thinking about relaxing and, and thinking about your message. Another thing that I think is, it's all about mindset as well. Um, you can really get wrapped up in how you look, how you sound, what you're wearing, um, you know, the, the key messages that you're gonna be talking about. But if you really go into the interview thinking, okay, well, how am I gonna help people? You know. At the, at the end of the day, that's what you do. You're helping another person, right? So it doesn't matter what your organization is. If you shift that perspective and have that good intention of, okay, getting my message out there is going to maybe uh, increase funds. Yeah, totally. And the same is true of fundraising, right? Everyone always thinks fundraising is so uncomfortable, but when you embody that mindset, same thing, like it just makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. All right, I wanna ask a question from the comments. So uh, often when I call and speak with a reporter, they say, send me a press release. Do you personally prefer a concise press release? But I wanna refree, or maybe dig a little deeper into that question. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Andrea, if you can let us know in the chat, like have you done already some of the stuff that Jennifer mentioned first in terms of like, finding the reporter you think is a good fit? Is this a reporter you've spoken to in the past or not? Uh, give us a little bit of background. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you have personal relationships mm -hmm. with them, of course. So first and foremost, that sounds good because it sounds like that's gonna get read. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and so it sounds like you're picking up the phone and saying, hey, I have this idea, would love to, uh, to pitch you or, or, or to see if you want to cover it. Is that Andrea, just do like a yes or no, we're on the right track in terms of how this rolls out. Yes, awesome. Okay, then I will let you uh, answer. So what's the question though? What's the challenge oh. that Andrea is having once she reaches out to the reporter and she asks them and they tell her to send a pitch? Yeah, so like, does she just send the pitch? Is it 
like, is it better to be concise or a little bit longer, or like a more formal press release, which, you know, I feel like everyone is sort of like taught to see or, and expect those, but maybe, yeah, like what, what are they expecting when they say that to her? Yes. Well, it depends. I feel like nobody really sends out a press release unless they're the government. I feel like that's um, that, that's like when I was, you know, at CBC last summer. That's the only time I would see an official press release. I think it's really crucial to keep it in an email format and keep it very casual but strategic at the same time if you know what I mean like that's why I said you know you really want to keep it to 200 to 300 words it doesn't have to be something where uh, a generic press release would say something like July you know 12th 2018 okay so we set so short pitch 300 words start with the story um Andrea, I want and and tied into other things that are going on. Yeah, make yeah. it part of a, a bigger a bigger story. Exactly. Um, Andrea, can I ask a couple more questions? So, when this has happened in the past, um, what did you send them, and what was the result? And, um, we'll give you a second to type. And anyone else, please feel free, or even like. You know, if you if you feel like you have an idea for a story, but you're not really sure, if yeah, if you want to work it through, or who like this is this is your time. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So sometimes they send along a photographer, um, or uh, I don't know what a VO is. Uh, voiceover. Okay. Okay. Yeah, voiceover uh, or SOT. What's SOT? Uh, sound on tape. Okay. okay. Instead of a package. Um, and is that the result you want, Andrea? No. What? Do okay. You want? So she probably wants a full story. Is what she's looking for. So is that correct? Yeah. So in the press release that you send, or the the pitch that you send, are you focusing on a story? Like, what's the kind of? Give us an example of something that you pitched. I want to try and identify like where in the process. Um, we can tweak so that you get the result that you want. So is it like, sounds like you have the, the right relationships. Um, are you pitching them something that resonates with their audience? Um, the right time of year? Uh, okay, so, so it's a specific event where your organization is making a big donation. So I'm gonna say, what's the story behind that? Is that fair? Yes. Yeah, I think um, I think what probably happens, depending on like an SOT, sound on tape or a voiceover, is pretty much uh, what that looks like. It's tied to global youth services. So what it, what a sound on tape or voiceover really is, it's usually like a thirty second story that the anchor is sitting at the desk reading, uh, you know, saying that you know, X organization raised this much money. Um, there was uh, 50,000 people that came. Well, if it was 50,000 people, there'd be more than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was, you know, so many people that came out. That kind of happens and that's shortened. Sometimes that's out of your control, frankly. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes what happens is there's other breaking news in the city. They, um, you know, there's a lineup editor in a newsroom which decides which stories are going to make it to the top of the newscast and which stories are going to have two minutes and turn into a full package and which ones are not. I'm curious though, when the camera or the photographer came, did they interview anybody? Because sometimes, um, you know, it needs to be more of like those type of stories. I can't see them doing a full package unless it's something on the weekend. I feel like if you are a smaller organization, pitching for the weekend is likely uh, you'll have a higher chance of getting a full package um, put together by the media because news is slower on the weekend. There's not a lot going on, but say your organization's having an event. It happens to be the same day as a major breaking news story. So for example, I believe it was two summers ago. Now there was a huge explosion in Mississauga. Um, this is uh, outside of the Toronto area, just uh, west. And every reporter in the city dropped everything they were doing and headed there. So that's something that's out of your control if your event is on a day when there's other major events happening. So you can, before you pitch and organize events, 
take a look and see, like, let's say you're an organization that's not necessarily um, going to be pitching a story, uh, like, let's just say around International Women's Day. Every media is going to be talking about that. And you pitch to have something on air that day, it's likely going to be shelved or put at the bottom of the list or ignored because the timing isn't right. So, um, you know, it's not, just, not enough just to, you know, put together an event and have the media come out, but it's maybe the timing, maybe if it's on the weekend, maybe that may get you better results. Mm -hmm. um, and then also maybe it, it could also be maybe the interviews didn't go so well, right? A lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll come out and, and the, they think they're great on camera. Maybe a family member or a friend has seen them and said, Hey, you're, you know, you've been, you know, you're on the news, you're a celebrity, but uh, reporters and producers do make notes of these types of things. So they kind of have a little log. Um, most newsrooms have a log about um, experts, you know, were they good on camera? Were they not? Um, were they easy to deal with? Things like that. Um, so yeah, so sometimes it can be like, we're not always as good on camera as we think we are. Um, what about the yeah, opportunity, yeah. like if it is tied to a global youth service day? So what about like leading up to the service day? So it's not about like capturing the actual event, but something like I've seen organizations where, you know, the event is, is the byproduct, but it, the story is a profile of one of the youth who's doing, who's either being recognized or something like that. Like, so that the goal isn't Ooh. coverage of the event. The goal is coverage of someone being recognized or honored. And it doesn't, the publication or, or um, coverage isn't necessarily going to have to be on that day or on that evening news. Um, so we're not as uh, Im affected by, um, by that's other timing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, again, that's when you're crafting your pitch to really offer up uh, the person at the end that's receiving um, whatever it is, a donation or, uh, you know, uh, benefiting from whatever services. So up a story where you have a central character. I always use Disney as an example. There, there's a hero and then there is a villain, right? So who's the hero in the story? You want to put that person front and center and build the story around them. And you can invite the reporter or the producer or the camera person to come and follow that person a day in the life of. That would be really interesting. Um, reporters uh, and camera and viewers, you got to really think, what do viewers want? Viewers want to see the behind the scenes stuff. So they don't want to see all the pretty um you know put together stuff all the time they do want to see the nitty-gritty stuff too so offering up a rare glimpse which obviously sometimes is harder to arrange let's say you're again trying to get a, well i've actually i when i worked in new brunswick i have been in a shelter i was in a in a shelter and we did they did allow cameras for the christmas food drive i believe it was there was a food drive and um we were allowed to interview people, but you know, not cameras are not always allowed into those places on a daily basis. You can't just walk in with a camera. So if you can think of anything behind the scenes that would be interesting, um, even if it's not maybe for TV, maybe inviting a print reporter, because a print reporter would love to craft a story around something like that. Um, that's another way to position it so that again, it's not just about the event and the cheering and the end result, because you know, that could be any organization in North America, honestly, right? There's nothing unique about that. But if there's an individual story, um, tell that story, tell that personal story. Awesome. All right. We have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is, can you share a few brainstorm questions to help facilitate a conversation on how is this piece newsworthy? So let's say you're not the only person or you need buy-in from other people, or you're just trying to figure out like what the right pitches, what are some questions we can ask ourselves, like almost like tick these boxes, is this gonna, is this gonna fly? Um, I think, well, let me think about this. So you're trying to ask more about um, just coming up with ideas? Yeah, or like almost like a, ideas are a checklist to say, okay, we have this idea, how do we verify? If how this, do you verify if it's gonna work or not? Yeah. Um, I think, again, going back to, again, just doing your research and seeing the types of stories that the media you're pitching to covers. Is this something that is, you know, along their genre? Is it something that's, that they're likely to cover? Um, maybe it's something that um, 
there was um, CP24 breakfast in Toronto during the week. I don't know if they do it anymore. Um, Mika Medola, she's a traffic reporter and she used to do um, a segment called For Goodness Sake. So For Goodness Sake was a kind of a, a, a profile or a feature of somebody doing good in the community. And she'd do that like once a week or once every few weeks. So it's really about thinking like, does this fit? Trying to visualize is your story going to fit into the media thinking about that um i would say thinking about timing again i think it's just really important thinking about the season um and it's just i think it's i think it's more about the time of the season and is it going to be a good fit trying to figure out those two things yeah it's kind of hard if i can get an example we could yeah. work with an example because it's kind of hard to yeah. do a generic assessment on something like that all right I'm getting these messages to me, so I'll give you a second to answer sure. for uh, Jothi to answer that. Um, and but it's more around like how to help build the story. But while you're messaging, uh, and feel free to put it uh, so everyone can see. Um, what I will say while we're waiting for Jen to unfreeze um, is. The stories are not that different from what we know makes a good fundraising story, right? Everyone loves a good uh, before and after. Um, someone that we want to emphasize with and see them succeed who faces barriers, like all the things um, that our donors care about, typically mm -hmm. the public is going to care about too. And especially mm -hmm. like from a fundraising lens, if you can get both of those out into a new audience. You know, I do know organizations who see a spike in giving when they get media uh, mm -hmm. coverage, but not media coverage. It's like, oh, someone, like I've done media coverage where we've hosted an event and we've had the media there and it's nice, but that does not um, get us donations. The coverage that gets donations is that story where they're like, oh my God, this is, I didn't know that this existed and I can connect with someone and, and feel like I'm helping someone. Um, and though that I've seen organizations raise money that way. So, mm -hmm. all right. Another question. So a group of 25 Canadian women will be walking a hundred kilometers along the Nile in Uganda in January, 2019 to raise a hundred thousand dollars for your organization, uh, which provides higher education scholarships to girls in sub-Saharan Africa. Amazing. Uh, one of our board members knows the editor at The Globe and has recently pitched the story in person and there was interest. So how do we keep this lead warm? Um, and ideally we'd like a write-up in the paper and online. Uh, what other coverage do you think realistically could come out of that? So something that I mean, it's not happening till 2019. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like pitching closer to the date is going to be a little bit more effective. It's great to have um, you know bounced the idea off of, off of, off the editor and gotten some positive feedback. It does sound like a very interesting story, but maybe. Um, pitching a series of profiles maybe pitching like five profiles that they could do you got to do the work for the journalist so maybe there's a special story uh in one of those 25 women um are they are they all canadian maybe there's somebody that is from that part of the world and has a personal connection maybe doing a profile as to why it's so important to them i mean those 25 women obviously are doing it for a specific reason there's some bigger big bigger story there so i think it would take a matter of strategizing so that you could figure out maybe pitching a three to five part series and a profile leading up to the event. I think that would be actually be very interesting for the readers. Um, I believe the globe obviously has international, um, international reporters, but really trying to figure out who's the reporter that's going to be covering the story. Cause pretty much uh, in Canadian media right now, the, uh, landscape is continuously changing and there's a lot of freelancers, a lot of layoffs, you know, a year from now, six months from now, two weeks from now, the head person could be not there anymore. Right. So, um, you can't, I feel like pitching so much in advance in advance can kind of work in your disadvantage just because the, the editor is not going to want to 
hear about it from now until 2019. 2019 to me, I know it's six months away, just sounds like it's forever. But um, maybe pitching a little closer to the time that it's going to happen and pitching it in a series of three to five segment uh, uh, story ideas that they can actually um, compile. And then with the Globe and Mail, a lot of their stuff or content, they turn into video content online. So thinking about when you're pitching, not pitching just for print, but thinking about any sort of visual elements. So will you uh, say you can invite your reporter to bring their camera and watch some of these ladies packing? Maybe they're packing just a backpack. Maybe they're packing just a suitcase. Maybe there's something unique happening um, to get them prepped. Um, I think it's a really interesting story and concept, but I think it just needs to be segmented out into the journey because I think as a person, I would want to know well, what's the prep work going on behind this? And you know, that's only that's and that's only half the story. Their journey down or up the Nile is 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 the other half, right? But trying to build that excitement from now to the time when the actual event's going to happen is probably your best bet. Yeah, I love that. Like, I are they training? Like, how do you prepare to walk that mm-hmm. that far? Um, and there's some great visuals there. I think it's really mm-hmm. cool. And just a great, uh, great project. So hopefully that was helpful. We have a few more minutes. If anyone else has any questions, um, there you go. Super helpful advice. You're very welcome. Um, uh, I think we've covered like a lot of different types of of media opportunities. Uh, I think the key message is for sure, like finding the right... Uh, person and mm-hmm. then telling a compelling story, right? What's, again, it's behind mm-hmm. the scenes. What is, uh, and this isn't a surprise to anyone who's in fundraising. You know, we, we know that, we know all this stuff, but it's equally true uh, when we pitch the media, uh, if not more so. So to find those stories, tell those stories um, and make it sort of a, a human interest Mm-hmm. Type uh, type story. All right, we'll give everyone a couple other minutes. One of the, I'll I'll share with you guys as one of the clients we're working with provides um, housing, long term housing and support for mostly women, but some men who uh, have mental illness, live with men- mental illness, and uh, are really hard to house. Right, like it's. Uh, when you have mental illness, there's a lot of instability. And with other challenges, it's really hard to stay in secure housing for a long period of time. Uh, and so I met with a board member yesterday who said, oh, we really want, we, we need to get the word out, right? Like, does this sound familiar? This is like every organization I've ever been in. We need media coverage. And I was thinking, for those who missed our, our chat at the beginning, I woke my son woke up in the middle of the night and I had this moment where like one of the biggest misconceptions around organizations or an organization like that, like success is very different. That story to success is very different, right? You're not like having the same life as someone else. Uh, You might be living in supportive housing for your, for the rest of your life, but that is success for that person. And I was thinking, okay, maybe that's like a, a little bit of an angle, right? Like, you know, in, in nonprofits where we all want to hear that like happy ending, but for these women, a happy ending looks very different than what we imagine it to be. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. was thinking, hmm, who, who wants to hear that? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. It looks like people are quiet. So um, I'll just wrap up really quickly. First with a thank you. I think we covered mm-hmm. so much, really practical, which is what we love. Um, and hopefully mm-hmm. if you guys do get some coverage, let us know. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we do not have a masterclass in August, uh, but I'm really, really excited to share that I have Paul Nazareth from the Canadian Association of Gift Planners as our guest for September 11th. 
and he, we we're going to talk about planned giving and legacy giving for small nonprofits. For those of you in Canada, you might know Paul from his time at Canada Helps. He's a huge advocate for small organizations, uh, gift planning expert. Uh, and I know this is something that is on organizations' minds all the time. How do you build out a legacy program? Really excited to have him on. And then the month after that, October, we have a woman named Avery Schwartz who started uh, something called Camp Tech here mm -hmm. in Toronto. She's amazing. Okay, okay. Yeah. Very uh, cool. We're going to talk about like bootstrapping your tech for your organization. Again, it's like how do you build a website uh, that looks good and functions, but that's inexpensive? What other things do you need to be thinking about? Uh, Avery is a tech guru, but spent many years working in our sector. So she totally gets, and in small organizations, mm. totally gets it. Um, really excited for both of those. And one last time, if you are interested in being part of our accountability experiment, really excited to see where it goes. So please apply. I'm going to throw that in the chat one more time. Uh, whoops. Got to spell it right. And apply space is limited, but I think it's going to be really great. I mean, who doesn't want to accomplish more in the time that they have. Mm -hmm. um, so please apply. Have a great rest of the summer, everyone. We will be back in September uh, with amazing content. I can't wait. Awesome. Can I just say quickly that if anyone wants to uh, receive uh, media tips into their inbox, uh, you can head on over to my website, she'snewsworthy.com, and there's an opt-in box on the front page. Um, and if anyone's interested in chatting and you know, trying to figure out more strategies for uh, pitching to the media, uh, there's a box there. You can also contact me or at jennifer at she'snewsworthy.com. That's where yeah. I'm at. I get these emails. I love them. Definitely. If this is a priority for your organization, um, it's super helpful. The ongoing support in, in this area. So definitely I'm just going to type she's news worthy.com and yep. there we go. Yep. Uh, definitely, definitely join the email list and, uh, there's, it's all like very much aligned with what we do at The Good Partnership, which is practical, actionable advice and tips and tools to help you be more successful. So highly, highly recommend. Um, amazing. Well. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. And uh, we'll see everyone in September. Awesome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>